Hello, third grade mathematicians. Today we are going to work on lesson 19, session 2, developing reading and interpreting picture graphs. Now, before we get started on today's lessons, I want to kind of review what we talked about on our last lesson. Now, remember, when you're looking at a graph, there are some things that you need to think about. When you're looking at a graph, the first thing you want to do is read the title. Then make sure you look at the label so you understand what the graph is about. Then you need to find either the key or the scale, depending if it's a picture graph or if it's a bar graph. Then once you have those things figured out, you can pull out the information. Remember, if you don't have an index card, you can also just take a piece of paper and write this down in your notebook. Now, another type of problem we're working on today are compare problems. And we've talked about compare problems before, but I thought it might be a good time to write down some of this information so you can use it as we go through this lesson, because we're going to see quite a few compare problems. And if we know ahead of time how to solve them, it'll make solving the word problems easier. Now, compare problems are when we have two different things that we're looking at. They may ask you questions like, how many fewer? They might ask you, how many more? They could also ask you, what's the difference? Compare problems ask you to compare at least two different things. Now, when you solve a comparing problem, you can solve it in two different ways. So say, for example, I have A, and A is 14. Then I have B, and B is 22. I could ask you, how many fewer numbers does A have than B? Or I could ask you, how many more numbers does B have than A? I could also ask you, what's the difference between A and B? All three of these are going to be solved the same way. Now you get to decide how you want to solve them. I have some students who like to add. And when you add, you start with your smaller number, you count up, and then you find your bigger number. Or you can subtract. You can take your larger number, subtract the smaller number to find the difference. It's up to you how you want to solve compare problems as long as you have a strategy that works for you. Now, this would be a good idea to put into your notebook. So if you have a piece of paper or your notebook, or you can even use your math worksheet. Write this information down so that it's sitting next to you as you work and you can refer to it if you have a question. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to put those to the side. We'll pull them out if we need to. Let's go ahead and start with our graph for today. What kind of graph is this? What do you notice? That's right. It's a picture graph. It's a picture graph because it's using some smiley faces. Now remember, when we're looking at a graph, before we get started, we do want to find some information first. Let's go ahead and read the title. Favorite season. Oh, like winter, spring, summer, fall. We found the labels. Find the key. The key says, let's read that together. Each smiley face stands for five students. Okay, now that I have read the graph, I can start to pull out my information. Let's go ahead and read our word problem. Jamie asks students in his school to choose their favorite season. The picture graph shows how students answered. How many more students chose summer than chose winter as their favorite season? Okay, so what is this problem about? It's about Jamie asking his student or students at his school what their favorite season is. In other words, which season do they like the best? Winter, spring, summer, or fall? Okay, now let's read it again and figure out what's the question that we need to answer. Jamie asked students in his school to choose their favorite season. The picture graph shows how many students answered. How many more students chose summer than chose winter as their favorite season? What's the question? Right, here's the question mark. So that means it's asking us how many more? Oh, I recognize that. How many more? Look at that. It's a compare problem. How many more? So we are being asked to compare two things. What are we being asked to compare? 
Right, we're being able asked to uh, sorry compare summer and winter. So that means we need to look for the information for summer and winter. Here is summer and here is winter. So our question, let's read it again one more time. Make sure we have it. How many more students chose summer than chose winter as their favorite season? So how many more students chose summer than winter? Take a minute on your own and see if you can figure that out, and then we'll go through the problem. Okay, so how did you solve this? There's many ways to solve this. So we're gonna talk about a few different ways to solve it. I'm looking at the graph right now and I'm noticing that there are more people who like summer than winter. Exactly how many is that? What did you come up with? Did you come up with 10? If you came up with 10, you have the right answer. If you didn't, don't worry, we're gonna turn the page and start figuring it out. Okay, it's the same problem here. Now, to picture it, to picture it, you can kind of visualize the answer. That means you kind of see it in your head. You're using the symbols, you're using the pictures to solve the problem. I'm the kind of person that likes to visualize, but some people like to do the modeling and the count. You have to decide what strategy works for you. So we'll go over both of them. In the picture it, you can use pictures to understand the problem. So you remember that each happy face stands for five students. So I noticed for winter, there were one, two, three, four happy faces. In summer, there was one, two, three, four, five, six smiley faces. And so when I'm counting them, since those are the same, I don't need to count them. They have the same, don't need to count them. Same, same, same. So now I'm just visualizing that summer has two more smiley faces. And since each smiley face is five, that means it is 10 is the difference. Now, some people like to count. So notice I didn't really do any counting in the beginning. I only had to do my two smiley faces at the end. But some people like to count. So you can model it. So you can use number lines to help you understand the problem. Remember that each smiley face stands for five students. So you could do skip counting. Five, 10, 15, 20. 20 people like winter. Then for summer, let's skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 30 people like summer. Now you don't have to actually have a number line. We could actually go up here and go to winter and go 5, 10, 15, 20. And then we could go to summer. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So we are counting. And I notice when I'm counting that the difference is two fives, right? It's two smiley faces, it's two fives. The difference is 10. So that's a second way. So how do you think you solve? Do you visualize it like you just look at the pictures and figure out the answer? Or do you do counting and keep the numbers in your head? Remember that as you go through this lesson. Okay, let's turn the page. So now we're going to connect it because in math, sometimes we do have to have numbers and equations. So we're going to take what we just learned and make an equation out of it. Now you will use the problem from the previous page to help you understand how to answer questions about picture graphs. What does the problem ask you to find? What did we need to find? Do you remember? How many more students chose summer than chose winter? Okay, so we are actually looking for the difference between summer and winter. I'm just gonna use S for summer and W for winter. So remember, we're looking at for how many more people like summer than winter. Complete the key. Each smiley space stands for how many students? Five, very good. 
Okay, so let's complete the table. So let's take what we know about our word problem and apply our numbers and equations. The favorite season is winter or summer. The number of smiley faces. For winter, there were four smiley faces. How many smiley faces were there for summer? Let's go back and count. One, two, three, four, five, six. There were six smiley faces. Now remember, when we are working on um, groups of things, remember that the number of smiley faces are groups of students. So we had four groups of five students. Because remember, a smiley face is five students. So four groups of five. What's four times five? Five, 10, 15, 20. Now we had six smiley faces for summer, and remember each summer or each smiley face is a group of five. So we have six groups of five. Six times five is 30. How many more students chose summer than chose winter? So using our math equation, we can take 30, subtract 20, and we get 10. So 10 more students chose summer. Explain why a key is important when solving a problem that has a picture graph. What does the key do for us again? That's right, the key tells us the way to count, or the, um, the key tells us the number per symbol right, per picture, it tells us how to count. It tells us how to count. Remember, we can skip count. And this time we're skip counting by fives. Okay, now I want you to reflect. Look back at our Try It, the strategies by classmates, and picture it and model it. Which models or strategies do you like best for reading and interpreting picture graphs? You have to explain which one you like. Maybe you like the equations. You could do that. You might like the counting. You might like the visualizing. Or if you even noticed on the front page, I just thought about the ones that were matched and there were two extra, so that's 10. So how would you like to solve the problems? Okay. Let's go ahead and go to 422. Now we're going to apply it. Use the picture graph and what you just learned to solve problems seven through nine, show your work. Now remember, we have our graph here. Now we've already looked at this graph, so we're gonna go ahead and read the word problem. Otherwise, I would take some time to get to know the graph. How many students did not choose spring or summer? Hmm. How many students did not, that's important, they did not choose spring or summer. What does that mean? You know what, there's another way we could ask that. They're asking how many students did not choose spring or summer. That means we could ask how many chose winter or fall, because that's what we're looking for, right? We want to know how many did not choose spring, so they didn't choose spring, and they did not choose summer. We're looking how many chose winter or fall. Okay, well, let's take a look at how many chose winter. How do you want to do this? Want to count by fives? Okay, five, 10, 15, 20. Okay. And how many chose fall? This time, let's do multiplication. How many smiley faces are there? One, two, three, four, five. There's five smiley faces. There's five groups of five. What is five times five? 25. Okay, so 20 people chose winter, 25 chose fall. And they wanna know how many choose winter or fall. So that means we just need to add them. 
20 plus 25. Now, if you need to, you can write it over here. Zero plus five is five. 20 plus 20 is 40. So I put a four in the tens place. My answer is 45. So our solution is 45 people chose winter or fall. Oops, there we go. Nice job. Okay, number eight. I'm gonna read it and pause, see if you can figure it out. Use a number line to find how many students chose spring. Let's go look at spring. What are we gonna skip count by? Go ahead and draw your arrows. Did you get to 15? I went five, 10, 15. Nice job. 15 chose spring. How many more students chose spring or fall than chose summer? Ooh, this one gets a little tricky. Did you notice there's a few things we need in here? What do you notice about this question? Let me read it again. How many more students chose spring or fall than chose summer? Do you notice this right here? How many more? What kind of problem is this? Look at that. How many more? How many more is a compare problem? Now, we have to think about what are we comparing? What's being compared? Students who chose spring or fall then chose summer. So we're comparing spring and fall together to summer. So they want to know spring or fall, and we need to compare that to summer. The way I knew that is because the word then tells me that we're comparing this to that. So we're comparing spring or fall to summer. So I'm gonna draw my boxes. Now, I don't know how to draw my summer box yet because I don't know if it's larger or smaller than fall and summer or spring together. So let's go ahead and look at spring or fall. Can you tell me how many people chose spring or fall? How are you gonna do that? I'm gonna skip count by fives. Now we have to count all the spring and all the fall because look at we have to choose the students who choose spring or fall. So let's go together, here we go. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 